Hello everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Leading New Technology Adoption, Win Hearts and Minds, brought to you by Technology Services Industry Association and sponsored by Oracle NetSuite OpenAir. My name is Ingen Triago, your moderator for today. Before we get started, we just have a few housekeeping items. To maximize your webinar experience, click the question icon in the upper right corner of the registration to check your system's most recent versions of browsers and Flash Player. Updates to the most recent version available for the optimal viewing experience. Audio will be delivered via streaming. You will be in listen-only mode and listen via your computer or mobile device. Webinar controls including volume are found below the presenter headshot area. To view your webinar, select your link to proceed to the player, and you can ask questions at any time by submitting your questions via the Ask a Question box on the left side of the webinar player. We will have a live demo during today's presentation. Feel free to enlarge your slides or video to full screen at any time via the full screen button, which will appear on the top right area of the video or slide area. There will be an exit survey at the end of today's live webinar. Please provide your feedback on the content experience by filling out the brief survey. And finally, a link to the recorded version of today's live webinar and access to download the PDF of the presentation will be sent out within the next 24 hours via email. Once again, thank you for taking the time to join us today. You can follow TSA on Twitter at TSA Community and use hashtag TSA Webinar to contribute to today's conversation. I would now like to introduce our presenters today. John Ragsdale, Distinguished Vice President of Research Service Technology for TSIA, Terry Melnick, Product Marketing Director, PSA for Oracle NetSuite OpenAir, and Marlon Arevian, Principal Sales Consultant for Oracle NetSuite OpenAir. As with all of our TSA webinars, we do have a lot of exciting content to cover in the next 30 minutes. So let's jump right in and get started. John, the floor is yours. Thank you, Inga, and hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Well, it is absolutely true that you will never receive the return on investment you expect for enterprise applications if you can't get employees to use them. And unfortunately, this is something that we commonly hear from members who have implemented professional services automation and find that they're finding some of their consultants are really dragging their feet uh, in getting on board with the new technology. So today we're going to talk about how to overcome some of those adoption challenges and how to make sure that your consultants are uh, anxious anxious about the new implementation and eager to jump in and get involved. So uh, as I say, I talked to a lot of members who have implemented PSA and unfortunately didn't really involve employees in the selection process, uh, and they're finding that employees are, are really uh, sort of resistant uh, to move to the new tool. And some of the comments that I frequently hear, uh, IT shoved the product down our throats with no input, absolutely, they don't want to feel it was an IT initiative. It needs to be coming from professional services executives. Uh, they didn't receive enough training. It's harder to use than our old system, um, which probably isn't the case. But, you know, change is hard. And moving from an old system they're very comfortable with to a new system, even if it's more streamlined and user-friendly, uh, may be difficult for, for some of your employees. Uh, and finally, something that I hear quite a bit about is the new system is all about management, not consulting. And that's because executives tend to talk mostly about the executive dashboards and the insight they're receiving. Uh, so you definitely need to highlight uh, what is in it for the consultants and features that will make their lives easier. So back in 2012, I published my first book, Lessons Unlearned, and one chapter was dedicated to selecting enterprise technology without using an RFP. I've never been a big fan of the RFP process. I don't think it ultimately helps you pick the best solution. So I wanted to walk through that five-step process today uh, briefly and talk about how to involve employees at each step. So the first step is defining business goals for the project. And as an example, a lot of TSI members start a search for a new PSA tool after they've gone through benchmarking and they find that they've got particular metrics that are below their peer group and technology is seen as one way that they can definitely improve those metrics. So while you're thinking about the goals for the new project, this is uh, when you should talk to your employees, let them know that you're starting a search for a new PSA tool and have a conversation with them. What do 
they like and not like about the current system and what would they love to see uh, in a new technology platform. Step two is identifying a short list of best fit vendors, and this is often when I get involved in the conversation with our members. Uh, they're particularly focused on who's really good at resource management or who uh, can easily plug into my billing system, uh, etc. So uh, this is also a good time to reach out to your consultants. A lot of them have friends or peers or networking contacts who are also consultants with other companies. Ask them what they're hearing. Are there any PSA systems that uh, their peers really love using that we should include on our list to investigate? Number three is asking vendors for references with similar business results. So let's say your goal here is to improve utilization by 10%, or maybe you want to cut the time to generate a proposal from 30 days to 20 days. Ask the vendors, give me examples of other customers who have also been able to uh, increase utilization or decrease proposal time or whatever the metrics are that you're worried about. And when you get those case studies and those vendor materials, make sure you're sharing those with the team so you're keeping them in the loop, they're understanding which solutions you're looking at, and it makes them feel like they are part of the process. Number four is arranging product demos from the vendor finalists, and this is where you identify those very influential consultants that everybody listens to. They've got a lot of clout within the organization, and invite them to be a part of this. They need to be in the room for these discussions about the data model and migrating information and integrating to your existing CRM and your billing systems, etc. Uh, let them participate in that. And then finally, when you do identify identify uh, the winning vendor, make sure that this is a big announcement to employees, thank them for all of the help that you've given in the selection process, and this is where you emphasize features in the application that are of benefit to the end user, not just those great executive dashboards that may make them feel like you're spying on them uh, more than you were able to in the past. So I guess my final thought on this, I uh, spent a lot of years uh, managing uh, service organizations, and you've always got to remember the two tools in your management arsenal are the carrot and the stick. The carrot, of course, is incentives, and the stick is ramifications for not following along and doing the desired behavior. So uh, incentives to adopt PSA, uh, first of all, make sure that you have an executive sponsor. Uh, we don't want employees to think this is an IT initiative. There should be someone in their chain of command that they respect who is driving this initiative so they understand uh, the business goals for your organization uh, for adopting a new tool. Uh, provide adequate classroom and online training. You know, classroom may not work if everybody's working uh, in different locations geographically, but you can definitely do an online meeting. And I think it's important initially just to make sure everyone's got their login they can access the mobile application, show them how to do the basics like accept a project, file updates, uh, send in their expense reports, etc. Uh, and then you can refer them to any online training modules so they can get more detailed uh, information about using the application. Consider some gamification elements, and this could be as simple as uh, a scoreboard showing who's spending the most time in the application or who has used the most features, and some sort of recognition recognition even just by email of who the top adopters are. This is encouraging the right behavior. And also consider some incentives. And I've got a great example here from one of our members who was struggling to get consultants to use a new PSA tool. And they told them that they would automatically get 10% of their bonus regardless of personal or company performance, as long as they always filed their project updates and expense reports by 5 p.m. Friday using the mobile application. And guess what? They had 100% adoption and compliance because they threw in that incentive. Uh, and finally, uh, after the first couple of months when you start seeing your utilization tick up or your margins improve or whatever the business goals are, you need to... Uh, those prices for everyone to see, you know, I know it was a, a difficult uh, process learning a new tool, but we're already getting results and continue to report those successes.
So hopefully these incentives are all you need to get your employees on board. But if you do have a few still dragging their feet, uh, you've got to bring out the stick. And the stick in this case is an MBO or a goal in employee reviews for effective use of technology. Uh, and that means that if they're doing everything else in their job wonderfully, but they're not using the PSA tool, it is going to uh, lower their overall rating. That's going to impact their bonus payout. It's going to impact their likelihood of promotion. So make, make sure that everybody knows that you've invested heavily in the solution and that you definitely will, will um, you know, there will be ramifications on performance reviews if you do not follow through. So um, with that, I would like to turn things over to our first guest speaker today. Terry Melnick is the Product Marketing Director for Professional Services Automation for Oracle NetSuite OpenAir. Terry, the floor is yours. Hey, John. Thank you so much, and, and welcome, everyone, today. You know, this topic is a really important topic, and I think, John, you just hit all those important points right on the head. If you're looking for new software and you don't take into consideration what the end user is going to experience, what they're going to want um, to get out of the product, then you're going to get no value at all. And we've been very lucky with OpenAir to have a great solution that is both incredibly deep and rich in functionality, but balances um, that ease of use. So it can be tailored really, really easily to serve the needs of different kinds of roles, be it the consulting team, the financial team, the executive team, or any other team. Uh, and that balance, again, it's very, very important. We were um, doing some research with uh, some independent analysts, and TSIA, of course, uh, has similar uh, results from their surveys. But when you're able to adopt a PSA product, you're, you can get some tremendous benefits. In fact, the benefits are almost stratospheric. Uh, as you look through, if you could accomplish any one or even a fraction of any one of these improvements, you would pay for the system in itself and generate multiples more in increased revenue, increased profitability, increased productivity across the board. And as we look through a few of these, you'll see what I mean. Year-over-year uh, -year professional service revenue growth of 72% year-on-year for organizations who have adopted PSA platforms and have automated their service delivery. Uh, the next one down on the left, uh, a 2% increase in billable employees. Now, while that number doesn't sound big, we'll look at it in just a moment, um, it's a very, very powerful number when you start multiplying the number of consultants you have uh, times how many days a year they work. Um, a 15% increase in backlog, we're talking here, typically backlogs aren't good things, but in service delivery they certainly are. We want to make sure we have work that's ready to go as soon as consultants roll off their last project to have them working on. And that backlog, being able to increase it by having a, a system in place, being able to start staffing and profiling what the resource requirements are for projects that are just coming down the pipe so that when they hit, we have people ready, ready to hit the ground running. Um, it gives every consulting company a massive advantage in the marketplace, not only on improving utilization, but also improving uh, the relationship with the customer because they can turn projects around that much more quickly. Over in the top right, increase in revenue from new logo clients. Um, when you have a solution in place, it improves communication, improves visibility, it improves reporting and insight. And with that, you can improve the relationship with your customers and increase the sales to them either through repeat business or upselling of, of existing business. Uh, and 40%, of course, a very, very significant number. 24% increase in profit margin. I think this number says almost all of it. When it comes to a single measure, um, profit margin or project margin um, is, is, is one of the most critical ones because it looks at our costs, our investment, and the revenue we're generating. 24% is a massive number. And then last, a 7% increase in billable utilization. Now, again, what do these numbers mean in relation to different kinds of organizations? Well, if we look at the first organization, um, let's talk about a smaller consulting company, 100 consultants with an average billing rate of 150 an hour. Now, I would bet most of you attendees on the phone today, your organizations are either much larger than that, maybe multiples larger than that, and your billing rates are probably much higher. But if we look at a number very conservative of 100 consultants at 150 an hour, if you increase um, the, the billable employee amount by 2%, we're looking at $600,000 more of revenue a year. That would cover the costs of three 
two or three more more consultants per hundred. Um, that's a significant increase, and uh, and obviously a number that that no one would shy away from. When you look at the price of, of what an open air would cost, it would also be a fraction of that when you're looking at 100, 100 consultant deployment. Another number to look at here, again, the 100 um, consultant, uh, consulting firm, $150 uh, dollar an hour billing rate, a 7% increase in billable utilization. So we're, we're keeping people um, working, we're, we're maximizing their utilization. Um, we're, we're improving, uh, um, you know, the, the the meaningful work that they're working on, and we're reducing the downtime. It, uh, a seven percent increase is 2.1 million dollars a year. And again, when you look at the types of organizations that uh, are typically using PSA products, they're much larger than this, and the billing rates often are much much higher than this, depending on the industry. So any of these numbers would obviously be a very compelling argument. Um, to look at a, a fully featured professional services automation solution and open air uh, and NetSuite SRP are two great solutions that can accomplish these kinds of numbers. But the big question is, what's the increase in value of a service company who hasn't adopted a PSA solution like NetSuite Open Air? Well, the answer is simple. It's zero. And this is exactly what John was talking about. If you have mutiny, where the teams refuse to use the new product because it's too complicated or being pushed down their throats and they don't adopt it, it ends up being shelfware. And that's probably the worst situation to be in because you've invested all this money, time, and effort into trying to implement it. You, didn't, you not only didn't get the value of the product, but you didn't get the value of what the product would bring for the organization. And of course, what's the increase in value of a service company whose teams rejected the professional services tool because it was too complicated or difficult to use? Same thing, a big fat zero. So getting that kind of adoption is, is really, really important. And it brings, uh, it brings to mind a, um, a, a quote I once heard at a conference. Jack Welsh, the former CEO of uh, GE, was presenting to uh, hundreds and hundreds of uh, attendees to the conference. And he was talking about adoption. He basically said, if your executive sponsor is not on board, don't even bother. So even he, um, when he thinks about what was most important to him when it, was, when it came to technology, it was about being a sponsor to, of that new technology, getting these systems on board, and reaping the benefits of them. Uh, and I think any company could benefit from that quote. Looking at what kinds of tools typical service organizations use when we're looking at uh, the TSIA members across 2018, uh, over on the left, maybe a little hard to see, but uh, Oracle NetSuite, so both our SRP and Open Air products, were at the top of the food chain with the, the largest majority. And interestingly, the second highest adoption was uh, Jira, which many would not consider a PSA product. We would say it's actually complementary to PSA. So companies who have used um, agile methodologies and they're using JIRA to manage the specific engagements continue using JIRA and use them in tandem with an open air. The two of the products work, work very, very well together. Data can be fed back and forth between the two, and it's a one-two punch for those shops using agile. For those doing more conventional uh, service delivery, open air could be used on its own. But looking at that, obviously, open air and SRP, NetSuite, Oracle's um, uh, two products, the top of the food chain, and, and we've seen uh, companies get these kinds of benefits over and over and over again very, very consistently. When you think about the kinds of companies who have been using Oracle NetSuite Open Air, it's the kind of companies you respect and, and trust every day. Companies that you as a consumer use like American Express, Amazon, Intel, HP, and as companies, uh, be it in any industry, um, consulting, software, technology, healthcare, uh, insurance, it doesn't matter. Uh, these are some of the companies that, again, are the most well-respected companies in the world, and many, many of them are, uh, are, are big users of open air. So um, just great credentials right there. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Marlon. Marlon Arevian, again, is our principal sales consultant. Marlon, I'm going to hand it over to you to give a, a quick glimpse into the, the product uh, itself. Marlon? Thank you, Terry. Um, so as I, as I sort of spin up uh, screen sharing over here, just a quick preamble from my perspective. I like to think of how a high adoption takes place from two different perspectives. I suppose the first perspective would be from a, a very tactical level. How, I, how easy is it for adoption to take place based on our contributors and who is the best to actually perform the work? Um, at a much more sort of in the weeds level, getting our time and expenses into the system as quickly and as easily as possible, and then finally getting all that information 
packaged up quite nicely from an, from an invoicing standpoint and off to the customer so that we can uh, collect payment. So that whole kind of project to cash process. And then from a strategic standpoint, adoption is about how easy it is for executives to get the metrics that matter uh, from a reporting perspective so that they can make uh, business long-term uh, and even you know, short and long and medium-term business decisions. So I figured the best way to kind of illustrate that is let's just run everyone through a project life cycle. Um, I'll have to do it in a little bit more of an abbreviated sense, but let's just kind of take a look at the, at the key pieces of it. So what we're looking at is open air, and without too much preamble, let's kind of dive into a, to a project. Now, the setup of a project can certainly take place through uh, project templates, and that really takes the strain off of getting a project set up because everything that you're seeing within a project can be set up based on a template. And that, that of course, uh, includes like a work breakdown structure, right? So we can visually uh, illustrate the work breakdown structure over here through phases and tasks. And as a, as a PM, it's really easy for me to manipulate the plan. So for example, if I need to move a task, I can just do that in the work breakdown structure qu quite easily. Now, <clears throat> the other element that goes into a professional service automation tool, you know, we think about project scheduling and project management and work breakdown structure and, you know, is this task laid and, is you know, what, what's coming after this task and that sort of thing. But there's also an important element of uh, project uh, or professional service automation where we're tying the work that we're performing to invoicing. So we need a, a very simple and obvious way to tell the system how we intend to invoice our customer and recognize revenue. So again, let's not lose sight of where we are. We're looking at a project, and like I said, we need a, an ultra simple way to tell the tool how we've negotiated uh, any potential rates for billing purposes. The great thing about this screen is if I were to just kind of just be quiet and let you read it, you'd figure out how, you know, how it's all kind of set up here, but I won't do that real quick. So in this case, we have three different billing rules. And if we just look at this last one, this is, this is where it uh, makes it quite obvious. Here, we can say that for this particular project, we've set up various rates. And then once our analysts, our consultants, our project managers, and our trainers will use, it, will use the tool for time recording purposes, the appropriate rates will kick in so that we can produce uh, a dead precise invoice that's void of any errors and void of any potential uh, re uh, revenue leakage. So from a, once our project is all set up, you know, again, we need a very simple facility within the tool to align the best resources to our project. So for that purpose, our customers rely on the booking planner to quickly sort through all of their resources, see how busy they are, and allocate them to new engagements. So if our project needs an analyst, we can quickly have a filter up on top that shows us all, all, all of our analysts and quickly uh, create a resource allocation by dragging and dropping, choosing the appropriate project, and then plugging in some ancillary details like how long they're needed for or, or uh, what the number of hours is and, and that sort of thing. In this case, I'll confirm my commitment. Abby, uh, the person that we just scheduled for this project, will, of course, receive an email, and her, her uh, availability to perform other projects will, uh, as a result, go down. Now, once that's happened, we can go ahead and log in as Let's just kind of log in as Abby and see what she sees from her standpoint. So Abby logs into the tool. She has her own dashboard, shows her assignments for the week. She can see her utilization and has a to-do list of items around expense reports that are unsubmitted and timesheets that might be rejected and that sort of thing. Let's fire into the details and take a look at this uh, timesheet that's sort of in draft mode. Now, timesheets need to be ultra simple from an end user perspective. This is the web browser version of the open air time card, but certainly there is a mobile version available for both Android and iPhone, and it's actually available for time and expense reporting. I won't go get into expenses just because we don't have a lot of time to spend today, but once Abby is done filling out her timesheet, she goes in, she goes, uh, she goes ahead and submits her time card, and then we can have a manager come in behind the scenes and approve it uh, and that approval can happen by project. And once that happens, you know, let me just kind of close all these browser windows we have open. Our folks in finance can go ahead and review all the charges on a project by project basis. So over here we can fire in as uh, a fellow by the, by the name of Larry. Larry is a resource from a finance perspective and he can go ahead and review all the projects that have some form of billing, outstanding billing information. 
So here's that project that Abby had recorded time to. And as a finance person, I can review everything that's outstanding from a billing perspective. In this case, there's $13,000 worth of charges, and we can go ahead and either approve them or reject them. In this case, we're going to click on the big green easy button to move this on to, uh, to an invoice. And just like I said, invoicing is just as simple. You know, if, if from a finance perspective, we want to go ahead and create a performa or an actual bill within the tool, we can do so on a one-off basis, or we can create uh, an, a batch of invoices. When I choose that option, again, I can review all the charges, but in just a moment, we've gone from, we've kind of run, we've run right through the entire project lifecycle from the inception of a project through resourcing, right through time and expense tracking to the point where we're actually able to review an invoice and actually send it out to a customer. We can do so online or if we want to actually physically, well, we wouldn't print it and snail mail it, but if we want to PDF it, we can do that in, in some type of nice format like we're seeing over here. And so this was the sort of the tactical level, ease, being able to easily maneuver in and out of the tool from a project scheduling, resource management, time and expense, and project financial perspective. But then there's the other side of it where we want an easy facility for our executives to get, let's say, for example, a one-page summary of how a particular project is doing from a status summary uh, standpoint, right? So I can see status reports, the project's financials, what, phase are, what phases are coming in and out. Certainly, I have a facility within the tool for executive dashboarding. In this case, this is a resource management dashboard that's showing me the results of supply and demand in terms of re remaining availability by full-time equivalency. And Terry mentioned this. I mean, this is the the go-to report from a project financial analysis perspective where, as an executive, I have a bird's eye view of what projects are going on, the value of each one of these projects, earned, and, uh, earned revenue, uh, build revenue, any costs that we've incurred, and certainly the ability to report on profitability in terms of a percentage or in terms of, uh, in, in terms of dollars and cents. So that's sort of me kind of flying through it at 30,000 feet. Um, I hate to be abrupt about it, but let me turn it over to Inga. And I'm curious if, um, if any questions have come in from, uh, from our folks who've been li intently listening in. Great. Thank you so much, Marlon, for, for that really uh, informative demo. It's really great to see the tool. I um, wish we could have a whole hour to go through it in more detail, but um, but yeah, but thank you so much for that, and thank you to Terry and John for, for an outstanding presentation today. So we are going to the Q&A portion of today's live webinar. If you have any questions for our speakers, uh, John, Terry, or Marlon, please take this opportunity to ask those questions live via the Ask a Question box on the left side of the webinar player. So first question is, um, I heard, I've heard you need to be careful with balancing tools, features, with how easy they are to use. What do you think about that? Hey, Inga, Terry here. I'll, I'll take that one. Um, it's actually a really interesting question. You know, there are products in the market today that seem really simple to use. In fact, we had a new client come to us recently saying they're using a product that felt a lot like, um, you know, some app on their phone. And what happened was they adopted it, and within a year they outgrew it. It just didn't have any depth to it. Um, open Air over the years has gone very deep in, in, in uh, you know, a lot of the project accounting and resource management needs that a lot of our lar larger companies, uh, our, lar our larger customers um, have been asking for. But on the same token, we've uh, really started making a concerted effort over the last few years to also balance that with a world-class user experience. And, uh, and I think that's exactly what the question is getting at. Um, it has to be a balance of the two. Um, you have to create this, this really just simple experience for the team so um, the tool doesn't seem like it's overhead, simple to report progress, um, get their expense reports done quickly, report their time, then get out and deliver billable services, but then give the, the uh, management teams, the financial teams, the program management teams the tools they need to get insight, make better decisions, take action, um, track, uh, track the, the different financial uh, elements, be it revenue recognition or that the billing rules are set properly for each project, and um, really give the control that they need. And, and, uh, and we've heard from our client base and from our partners like TSIA that we do a great job of that. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Terry. 
So we are coming to the conclusion of today's live webinar. We did get a couple of questions that came in, and we will, be able, we will definitely be following up with you after today's live webinar. Just a couple of quick reminders before we sign off for today that there will be an exit survey at the end of today's live webinar. Please take a couple of minutes to provide your feedback on the content and experience by filling out that brief survey. And finally, there will be a link to the recorded version of today's live session and access to download the PDF of the presentation that will go out within the next 24 hours via email. I'd like to take this time to thank everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us on today's webinar, Leading New Technology Adoption, Win Hearts and Minds, brought to you by TSIA and sponsored by Oracle NetSuite OpenAir. My name is Megan Triago, your moderator for today, and look forward to seeing you at our next TSA webinar very soon. Take care, everyone.